you you went to school to Seneca College, right? Mm-hmm. And what how what was that transition like? You know, playing basketball and now uh, moving towards what you want you aspired to do. I think now. Well, back then you 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 went to a videography mm-hmm. uh, classes or a journalism program. Journalism. journalism so what was that program. like? Uh, for me, basketball. For me playing, it was never you know once I hit like mid high school. Like I, I played on. Uh, I, I went to Pope John Paul. Played on the teams there. Uh, we weren't that good at the time. Um, but after high school, just casually played uh, some of the leagues, some of some of the some of the Filipino leagues too. Um, but never really took it as seriously as I did before because I was never like at that point I wasn't I wasn't uh, you know going to make anything out of playing you know so uh, I had a job flunked out of school first at Seneca took a business program flunked out of school and then just had an office job for a few years and mm-hmm. and then I got laid off mm-hmm. and I got laid off and I had um, found out uh, I was having a son too yeah. So it happened at the same time. So now it was a chance for me to kind of like just reset and figure out what I want to do because I, I, I always kind of knew I was a bit of an underachiever up until that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so just look for programs, look for things to, to that's something I wanted to do and, 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 and try to find a passion. And um, my good friend who lived across the street from me, Tony Bueno, who's now in the Philippines uh, and he's big time there, um, as a radio host and personality and all that, uh, uh, he had taken a broadcasting course and, and um, he, he told me, you know, you should check it out. And, and luckily enough, I found Seneca, found the Ryerson programs and the George Brown programs, and um, Seneca was the only one that, that uh, accepted me. So I yeah. um, went in there, and the first day I just fell in love with, with uh, the whole, just everything about the broadcasting. And, and, and I... The program I took, it was more focused on like on camera training. Uh, so I had to do a lot of writing, a lot of on camera work. But in the second year, there was a documentary class. Mm. And that was it. Once I got into that class, I realized what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like a hip hop documentary, it got a bunch of awards, and um, got out of school. And. Uh, the other thing, too, just to wheel it back a little bit, 98-ish time, I started volunteering with the Raptors mm-hmm. as uh, game ops. Mm-hmm. So the guys who threw the t-shirts in the crowd, mm-hmm. brought the trampoline out for the Raptor. Um, so I had been with the Raptors for a couple years. Uh, I graduated from, from uh, Seneca, and they had Raptors TV at the time. I said, I told my my boss at Game Ops, I got I just finished school. Can you send my resume to Raptors TV? And it just so happened that day they started looking for somebody that can help out with a new show that they had, which was Raptors Today. Mm-hmm. And that was just a, they just needed a guy to kind of like roll tape and 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 log and help gather footage and and be a volunteer. Mm-hmm. So. Um, uh, I met with uh, with uh, the guy who was in charge at the time, and he brought me on. And then within weeks, Raptors TV is such a small was such a small little little network that you can get your hands on so many things, and it just kind of just every like within like every month there was something new that you're able to get your hands on. And now, as a basketball fan, being a Raptors TV, when the Raptors came came about '95, I was. I was in with the Raptors and to be at Raptors TV and have access to all the footage yeah. throughout the entire history yeah. uh, was just crazy to me. And and I had an opportunity to do a bunch of programming, different, a lot of content, and it just it just went from there. What are some of the things that you, I mean, from there early on, what are some of the things that you worked on? And before you get to where you are now, what are some of the things that you, I'm pretty sure you went to a lot of things. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot. Um, the, the, with the broadcast, so it was a stretch about eight, maybe about six years, I was doing the, the broadcast teases for, for each game. So that's the opening tease for, mm-hmm. for um, whatever. The, 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 if you don't know, MLSE does um, all the, the broadcasts regardless if it's on TSN or Sportsnet. Mm-hmm. So those are the guys who are, it's, they're, they're MLSE guys that, that do the, the, that produce the games. So we would do the teases. Um, 
I started the show X's and O's, uh, NBA XL. I mm -hmm. took over NBA XL, and the, the last couple of years it was uh, it was there. Um, and then a whole bunch of like you know behind the scenes type of features, so the behind the drafts. DeMar DeRozan's uh, rookie year, we documented his rookie year. Um, all sorts of all sorts of stuff. So it's just it was it was it was a fun time because mm -hmm. I was able to like get my hands on a, a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. Um, where does your inspiration come from, from like your ideas when, uh, with all these documentaries? Like, how do you kind of come about it? What's your process like? My, well, my boys know um, when I was a kid, uh, when I was like high school and grade eight ish times, um, like, I would take, I would watch the games, NCAA, and like Nick Van Exel was my favorite player growing up, and oh, Kenny nice, Anderson, yeah. and, and Fab Five. Um, so I would take their games, I would record their games, and uh, I would take two VCRs and like make little highlight tapes of, of, of my favorite players and put it to music and, and all that. So it's just funny how it kind of like played out where I'm, I'm able to actually like, like do this stuff. And um, I love basketball. Uh, like I'm, there's not too many people that love basketball <laughs> yeah. more, than, more than me, you know what I mean? Like, um, so when it comes to like, uh, being able to tell stories, basketball stories, it's just, it's like, it it's easy. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's easy. Like, there's nothing, there's no real, uh, there's no stress involved. There's no, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, like, looking for, 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 like, inspiration and trying to figure out new ways to do things because it's just, like, I just, it, it's just so amazing to be able to work with this kind of stuff and be able to to craft these stories because like it's just there's so many things i want to i want to tell mm -hmm. um so uh it's 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 really really cool that uh i've been able to uh, and t trust me i don't take it for granted because it's like it's it's, cr it's just crazy to me that i'm able to do this kind of stuff yeah i agree i mean it's amazing story to get to know you and to share your story yeah. it's really amazing to hear mm 